Hello, everybody. Um, the next presentation is about GeoService, and you have uh, Alessandro Parma to talk about this. He is a senior DevOps engineer at GeoSolutions. He designs and implements geospatial systems based on GeoServer and other great open source projects. Hello, Alessandro. Hi, Diego. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. It's thanks your... For... Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the nice introduction. Um, my name is Alessandro Parma. Uh, I work at GeoSolutions as a DevOps engineer, as, um, as Diego said. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, GeoServer specifically, um, about how to deploy and uh, operate GeoServers from a um, DevOps perspective. It's going to be um, cloud-oriented, so we're going to talk a bit about uh, cloud deployments and uh, how to migrate um, your, your GeoServer cluster to the cloud. Two words about GeoSolutions, the company that I work for. Um, we're based in Italy and the US, and we have uh, worldwide clients. We comprised of more than 30 collaborators and 25 engineers. Some of the products we work with um, uh, listed here, GeoServer, uh, MapStore, GeoNode, GeoNetwork. Uh, we have um, we offer uh, support services, enterprise support services, deployment subscriptions, so we can help out with uh, your deployments, customized solutions. So of course you can reach out for help with development and uh, professional trainings as well on all of the products listed above. Our affiliations, so we support strongly open source, as you can tell by the list of products we work with. Um, we uh, collaborate and participate in many working groups, including OSGEO, uh, OGC, and USGIF. Okay, let's jump into uh, the presentation. is the agenda, so uh, what we're going to talk about in detail. Uh, cloud computing, we're going to give a brief intro, just the terminology to, to so that you can understand what we're talking about in case you don't know yet. Uh, why it may be relevant to you, so what are the uh, pros and cons of moving to the cloud, why you should be considering using the cloud if, you, if you're not yet using clouds and um, the migration process. So if you're interested in it, uh, we're going to talk about migrating to the cloud in general, as well as uh, specifically for your GeoServer. So you may be thinking about um, migrating your GeoServer cluster from an on-premise to the cloud. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to check what are the common uh, pitfalls, as well as give you some tips uh, gained from our experience. We're going to talk as well about um, containers, orchestrators, and specifically Kubernetes, which is quite relevant, I think. Uh, in our days, it's gaining more and more popularity, and uh, you could benefit from um, uh, deploying your GeoServer in a Kubernetes uh, orchestrator. Why? And then two words about monitoring and logging. Uh, it's a bit different in the cloud compared to, to, to traditional deployments. So we're going to talk about that as well as how to gain insights from your from your GeoServer cluster. So cloud computing. Uh, what is cloud computing? It basically um, means computing services over the internet. So servers, storage, databases, network, software, whatever, every kind of service or resource that is offered to you by a provider, 
uh, over the internet. That's supposed to hosting your own thing uh, with your own hardware that you bought uh, locally. And um, there are several pros and cons that we can talk about um, in terms of uh, cloud computing. Some of the pros, the big pros of cloud computing um, are often mentioned uh, elasticity. So the ability to adapt to the workload changes by provisioning and deprovisioning resources on demand. So uh, at the time the, the load increases, you'll be uh, provisioning more resources. When the load gets, goes down, you'll be decommissioning resources. A typical example of this would be uh, AWS EC2, if you're familiar with, with, with AWS or similar, um, an auto scaling group. So you could uh, shrink and uh, enlarge uh, your EC2 instances pool based on load, for instance. Another typical example would be uh, elastic storage. So you can uh, get some storage from a cloud provider and uh, it will adapt based on the um, amount of this space you need. Another pro of um, cloud computing is uh, scalability. So some of these services provided by, by uh, cloud providers um, can change and um, allocate um, more resources depending on uh, uh, the need of your application. So let's say uh, your virtual machine, you can change the type of your virtual machine based on the amount of core or RAM that you need or uh, scaling a database based on uh, the load that your application, your own application is, is uh, demanding from the database. Other pro of uh, cloud computing, uh, reduce time to markets. So especially relevant for business and management, if you think about um, IIS, so uh, infrastructure as a service, for instance, you can ask for um, virtual machines, databases, whatever, to the cloud provider, and they're immediately available to you. You don't have to um, put down the money, get your own infrastructure, get your own engineers, uh, and so on. So significant, uh, significantly shorter uh, time to market. Uh, security and privacy maybe could be considered a con of using uh, cloud services. While you're using cloud services, you're basically um, moving your, your local application and resources to the cloud where they may be running uh, along other services by other providers. So you need to be aware of that. Your applications may be running on a server that is used by other people. And there are some security and privacy concerns uh, concerns um, following that. Another pro would be lower costs. So you can significantly reduce uh, the costs of hosting your applications when you move to the cloud, especially if you leverage the elasticity of, of cloud services. So if you pay attention to scale and uh, um, re book resources depending on the load of the system, um, then it can lead to a significant reduce of cost. If you just book a ton of resources from the cloud provider without uh, adapting it to the load over time, it can increase the cost of hosting uh, your services because they're not cheap usually. There are a few different deployment models in the cloud. You have public cloud, which is the most widely used cloud um, deployment model. It's cost effective. It's uh, what I was saying before. So the cloud provider is making the infrastructure available to you and other people, other companies to run their software. They're all running on the same infrastructure. Then we have private cloud. Private cloud is basically a dedicated cloud infrastructure for your organization or for yourself. 
um, it can be quite costly and it's usually reserved to people um, working for government or schools or agency or uh, other environments where you need absolutely secure environments and you're dealing sensitive data. So in the private cloud, you're isolated from, from other services. Uh, no other people is using the infrastructure. So it could be, it can be considered safer in terms of security and privacy. Then we have a hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is uh, a mix of the two. Mix of the two is a combination of uh, public with a private environment. So that's typically implemented with uh, restricting at the networking level, um, the access and the communication between the services. So your application is running next to, to other applications, but they're not allowed to talk to your, to your applications. So this is kind of uh, combines the benefits of the two. Right, uh, let's talk about moving GeoServer to the cloud. So we talked about the cloud, a brief introduction. Now we're gonna talk about how you could migrate your, your local cluster to the cloud. There are a few, a few methodologies. Uh, first one is uh, rehost or also known as lift and shift. It's an IAS approach, so infrastructure as a service approach. You're booking the resources from, from, from the provider and you're de redeploying the application stack yourself without basically changing anything. So you're, you're, you're booking your virtual machines and then deploying uh, yourself the applications just like you would do on uh, your local on-premise environment. In this scenario, you're not really leveraging all the services offered by the providers, so managed service like databases or other kind of storage service, for instance. Uh, you're just taking your local environment and uploading it to the cloud. It's a relatively easy thing to do, so uh, it's quite a common pattern as well. The other approach would be refactor or lift, tinker, and shift. In this scenario, you tweak a bit your your uh, your architecture and adapt it to to the cloud to to the environment what is deployed on uh, this would be a pass approach so platform uh, as a as a service approach you're still booking the resources from the provider but then you're also using some of the services offered by the provider an example would be a managed database so you're you're not using uh, the standard um, self-provision database, you're using one of the providers. Finally, revise, or build, and replace. That's um, uh, a more uh, expensive approach in terms of resources and time. You would basically rewrite your, your, your application to leverage all of the services available. Um, this requires, of course, quite a lot of forward planning and knowledge to be implemented. As we were saying, uh, rehost uh, rehost means taking your local resources and moving them to, to the cloud. How would you do that in a practical term? Um, you need to choose uh, the right kind of virtual machines. Um, for GeoServer, that would be a compute optimized uh, virtual machine. So GeoServer likes uh, fast CPU cores. As a rule of thumb, you can use you can get four core virtual machines with four gigabytes of RAM, for instance, and uh, redeploy to the cluster, redeploy the cluster. So you would migrate the instances, configure um, your application, upload your data, and you're done. That would be the rehost approach. Refactor, use some of the services of the provider. As we said, manage database uh, it has quite a lot of advantages, in my opinion. You can uh, use backup and restore features. You can use snapshots, auto upgrades, and so on. So uh, there are quite a lot of nice things that you don't need to worry about. And you can leverage some of the storage options provided um, to you. You need to be careful on the kind of storage that you use for, for each component um, of your application. For GeoServer, that means uh, you need to be. You need to choose the right 
uh, storage for data deer, cache, um, data files, and so on. By the way, also uh, cogs are supported by GeoServer. In that case, you, you would be leveraging some object storage uh, offered by the provider. And you can think about storing cache, cache tiles in the object storage too. Here's a small diagram uh, of a um, GeoServer cluster deployed in uh, EKS. So um, Kubernetes as a service offered by, by AWS is a typical layout of how you could do it and the kind of storage that you can use for each one of the components we were talking before. FileShare, which is basically an NFS, you could use it for spatial data. So to share um, spatial data between the instances, and you can think about using it for cache tiles, for instance, has a couple of advantages. Uh, of course, it's a shared file system. So all of the instances distributed across the nodes can use it and it scales pretty well. Block storage would be your uh, regular um, local storage. Uh, it's not shared, so you, you shouldn't be using it for, for, for data, for instance, if you want it to be available to all the instances. Um, benefits, low latency, so it's good fit for, for temporary storing files like audit files and log files, maybe cache tiles. In that case, you would have um, a non-shared cache between your instances, your GeoServer cluster. So, there are some implications about that. So unless you really need very, very, very low latency, I wouldn't use it for cache tiles. Finally, um, uh, blob storage. Blob storage services like AWS S3 brings a ton of scalability. Uh, they scale pretty much indefinitely. It's cheap, so it's good to store lots of data. And it's shared again. So you could think uh, about using it for cache tiles, for instance, or um, cogs. So a quick recap, a uh, small checklist basically um, about things to consider uh, for a cloud migration. Uh, go for computer-oriented uh, instances of GeoServer. Choose a migration strategy, either a lift and shift or a refactor. Consider using uh, services offered by, by the provider like uh, managed databases. And uh, pick the right storage um, for the purpose and the needs of your project. Here's another topic that is linked to the previous one, to Kubernetes. You can also use uh, Helm to deploy uh, your, your GeoServer cluster. Uh, there are some details here. It's um, basically a package manager for Kubernetes. So it's it easily packages all of your software into, into a set of files that you can deploy in your, in your Kubernetes cluster allowing you to kind of template them and adapting to your environment. So it's a pretty nice tool. I advise you check it out. There are some resources available on the internet, like Docker images. Uh, you can find the links in here. And uh, the Helm chart is coming too as well. So we're working on it. Keep an eye on, on our blog and you will find an update over there. There's also a free webinar if you're interested in uh, running GeoServer on Kubernetes specifically that we um, I hosted uh, uh, about a month ago. It's available for you to, to take a look at. Two words about logging and monitoring real quick. So it can be tricky in a, in a cloud environment to, to keep an eye on everything. Uh, the environment is pretty much dynamic and distributed. So you have instances starting and stopping. You have um, distributed uh, instances of your application across nodes. So it can be hard to identify and debug problems in this environment. We have some tips for you. So you should consider aggregating and centralizing 
all the logs to, to uh, a single location um, that is easy to navigate and filter. So you don't have to go uh, around all your nodes and to check out the logs of the application. Uh, keep in mind that nodes can spawn and also go away. So a node can die if you keep your logs on a specific node and you don't ship it over to, to a central location, you run the risk of losing it. And uh, set up shippers to collect and send out the logs to the central service. Collect metrics, of course, very important. Uh, there are performance indicators like response time, throughput, out, uptime, error rate, and so on. And auditing. Auditing is a nice uh, feature offered by uh, an extension, a GeoServer extension called Monitor. It basically tracks requests made to GeoServer and export the information uh, about these requests into audit logs. Audit logs that you can collect and ingest and um, create pretty dashboards from. Here you can see uh, an audit event example, the kind of information you have in it, uh, performance, layer, errors, and so on. And here's an example of a, of a small dashboard with, with performance related information uh, that you can look at. Things like response time, uh, slow layers, cache hits or miss, and so on. A few more examples. Uh, response time, uh, IP of the requesters, and so on. And uh, finally, alerting. So uh, remember to set up alerts for your servers, for your services. So you have, uh, you, you're checking uh, the services being up and down. You're checking for errors, error rate, uh, out of memory errors, and so on. Remember, Remember to use different channels depending on the severity of the problem. So if it's um, uh, a problem that needs immediate att attention, then you should consider uh, paging someone. If it's a less severe problem, maybe you can just send out an email and uh, avoid waking someone in the middle of the night. That would be nice. And then you can think about automate the fix to the problem. So you can put in place some scripts and tools to try to fix the problem for you without waking up anyone. Examples of these would be watchdogs and health checks. So you're kind of probing the service uh, and checking the response uh, just to make sure it's healthy and um, eventually restart it if needed. Here you can find some useful links about what I've been talking about, uh, the Juice Solutions uh, website, the uh, webinars, uh, Cloud Optimized GeoTiffs and Helm. And uh, that's all I had, Diego. So I think if there's any question for me. A moment, yes. I have uh, some questions. Uh, a moment, please. Uh, the first one is, where can the dashboards with data from audit logs be viewed? So it's a, it's a web application. The one, specifically the one that I was showing you uh, is part of um, a stack of application applications by by elastic through the elk stack it's a it's a web-based uh, application called kibana so you can access it from from the internet easily and uh, you'll find all the dashboards and visualizations the ones that i showed you are just a subset of course uh, there's a lot of things that you can do and information that you can view depending on what you're interested in so it could be um, business related information, some analytics for, for, for managers or people uh, that want to know how the service is being used or could be um, metrics, logs uh, for operations and so on. Okay. Um, another one is 
how to use log data to tune the application. Do you have any use case to exemplify? Yes, um, that's a nice question. Um, if we're talking about uh, audit files, for instance, uh, the kind of information you have in them can be very relevant if you're looking for improvements in terms of um, performance. So you can uh, extract information for the audit files about caching, for instance. So you can realize that you're not leveraging the cache as much as you think and try to uh, change things. So take a look at your uh, client application if it's uh, not configured properly to use the cache, for instance. Or you can um, find some outliers. So some some you can be very fine grained with, with these tools and, and find slow requests. And uh, from them, try to reverse engineer and try to understand why they've been that slow and uh, and then fix the layer. Maybe it's a configuration issue, maybe uh, it's a styling issue. Um, so yeah, yeah, it can definitely be used. I would use Kibana, Kibana for that. Okay, I have another one. What storage is recommend, recommend for GWeb cache? Can you make use of S3 as blob store for the cache? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another another good question. There's no definitive answer, so it really depends on your use case. Um, S3 can be used uh, by means of um, a plugin available for for GeoServer. So GWC S3 plugin allows you to store cache uh, tiles in, in S3. And that would give you a very good um, scalability. So you would be able to support a ton of uh, requests per second, uh, thanks to the, the scalability of the S3 service itself. There are other options, of course. Um, a file share like an NFS or similar, you can use to share the cache tiles between all your instances. Uh, maybe would have a lower um, latency in that case. So in, in terms of pure performance would be a bit faster, um, but it can be a bottleneck if you have a very, very high load um, on your system. So if, you have, if you're serving many, many requests. Uh, there is, uh, it's possible to use uh, the memory cache of API Gateway in front of the GeoServe? It's, it's my question. <laughs> um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I may be missing something, but I'm not aware of any, any of any. Um, way to use it directly, directly from GeoServer. Okay. Another one is GeoServer on Kubernetes. It's a great competition to the classical ArcG service. Have you also helped clients to move from AGS to GeoServer and make the revised rebuild approach? Yes, yes, that's something we have done uh, a few times uh, with, with different clients already. And we um, keep posting regularly in our blog about useful information on how to ease the transition. So if you head over to the blog, you will find some, some relevant blog posts about the topic. And uh, yeah, uh, that's something we, we can do. It's, we can help out with um, with revising and, and migrating your, your cluster to the cloud. Okay, uh, more one. <laughs> <laughs> when should I consider a distributed GeoServer? Is there a threshold of data usage where it is optimal? Should I consider just sharding the data source and keep a single GeoServer node? Yeah, another very good question. So if, you, if you're running a single instance of, of GeoServer, no matter how good is your data store and how scalable it is, at some point you will hit a, a, a bottleneck 
either at the machine level, uh, operating system level, or in the GeoServer code itself. Um, so that's why it's uh, useful for, for production systems and uh, systems that have high load to, to be able to scale out. And uh, you would need to set up more GeoServer instances to overcome these kind of limitations, especially dis distributed uh, across multiple nodes. Uh, that way, they would not compete for resources on the same node. For instance, CPU. They would not try to, to, to get all the CPU uh, to steal it from each other. OK. Thank. Thanks, Alessandro. Uh, there is no more questions. Would you like to talk more anything? <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, I don't know. Uh, we have um, the contact info in the in the in the slides that I've shared before. If you have any questions, any more questions, you can reach out to us uh, using that contact information or head over to our, our website. Um, we keep publishing um, interesting things in our, in our blogs. OK. Uh, you have more one question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Is it advisable to use a single GWC in front of a scalable cluster of GeoServer nodes? Uh, okay, so good question. Uh, it wouldn't be highly available. So if you set up uh, a cluster of GeoServer nodes so that they are highly available in case one of them dies, if you set up a single GWC instance in front of GeoServer, then you're creating a, a single point of failure again. So if that node goes down, then uh, your service goes down. And that's not good. We, we typically recommend uh, using the integrated uh, GeoWeb cache into GeoServer um, mm. without setting up a dedicated node in, in front of them. Um, OK. It's the last. Uh, I would like to thank all the presenters and the audience and uh, it's the end of the day for us. And see you all tomorrow. OK? Bye bye. Thank you all. Thank bye you. Bye. Ciao, ciao.